Do you know what happens if you right click a keyframe in the inspector on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve? Bah, well stick around because in this video I'm going to show you. Make sure to let me know down in the comment section below how many of these you already knew. I just need to let you know real quick that this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one solution for creating a website and running an online business. So first one, load project settings to current project. So check out this project, it's got a really random timeline and a random frame rate. I don't want to have to amend them myself, I haven't got a preset, what I want to do is steal them from an existing project. So I'm going to open up my project manager by clicking on the little house. I'm going to find my other project here, simply right click and then I've got the option to load project settings to current project. Give that a click, override project settings, override. Now if we just close this down back into my original project, have a look at the settings, I'm now at 4K. 30. Real quick way of stealing settings from a previous project. Right, I've got some workspace tips for you now. Dotted around the edit page, we've got all these buttons. They're icons with labels. If we right click, we've got the option to show icons and labels or just icons. So I'm going to go with icons only and it just minimizes them, making things a little bit clearer. The same applies for the inspector. Right click, icons and labels, icons only or labels only. And it just gives you that little bit more room. And the same thing applies to these menu bars at the bottom. I can right click and I can have show icons only. And again, it just gives me that little bit more space to work with in DaVinci Resolve. Particularly useful if you're on a laptop with a small screen and you can actually get rid of some of those icons on the bottom as well. If you're anything like me, you don't use half of these icons. I'm very rarely in the media page, so you can turn them off. Simply click on workspace at the very top, go to show page, and then you've got all of the options within here and they've got ticks next to them. Simply untick the ones you want, so I don't want media, and that's just gonna remove it from a little menu bar, just clearing things up. If you ever wanna get it back, same thing, workspace, show page, tick it again, job done. But wait, before you all immediately go and hide the cut page, yeah, I saw you, I know what you're doing, there is actually something kinda handy on there. Now I love a dynamic zoom. If I give this footage a click in the inspector, dynamic zoom, toggle it on, and then we get a little pan out, we can swap it to get a pan in instead. And underneath the preview window, we've got a little drop down. We can change that to dynamic zoom and we get the two boxes. So we can adjust the amount of zoom. If we jump over to the cut page, all you need to do underneath your preview window, which should be here somewhere, you've got this little button. Give that a click to open up the tools. And then from here, further on along, you've got the dynamic zoom. From here, you've got the option to zoom, to pan or to angle. So rather than a zoom in and out, if I hit pan, it's going to put the two squares next to each other and then if I simply hit play, it's going to do a pan from left to right. I can hit these two arrows to swap them over, so now it's going to do a pan from right to left instead. And then we can also change the acceleration curve from linear to ease in, in and out and out. Now angle just takes you from the bottom left, top right, and does a pan diagonally instead. You can still come along and adjust this as you need to, but these presets are quite handy. Blackmagic, if you're watching, please give us those presets on the edit page. Thanks. Now, if you're on Windows and your DaVinci Resolve looks like this, and you've got this bar at the top and you've got your Windows bar at the bottom, simply go to Workspace and then come down to Full Screen Window and give that a click. And it just makes the window full screen. Again, just tidying things up and giving you just that little bit more room. Now this next one, useful for everyone, but in particular those that do any color correction or color grading. On the edit page, click on workspace once again and then come down to video scopes and turn them on. And then you get your scopes pop out window. You can choose what you're looking at by using the little drop down. I'm gonna leave mine on vector scope and it will just show up as you're working through your project. You can put this on a second monitor or just leave it any way you like. Now another quick tip, when you're using the vector scope, click on this little icon here to open up the settings and then turn on this show skin tone indicator. So then you'll know if things aren't following this line roughly that you're gonna have to hop onto the color page to adjust those skin tones. These look about right, don't they? Perfect skin tone. <laughs> Next one, continuing with the pop out, open up your media pool and then what you wanna do, right click on any of the bins over here on the top left. If you don't see your bins area, click on this little icon just to pop them open. I've only got one called master, so I'm gonna right click on master and then I'm gonna come down to open as new window and that's gonna pop out my media pool as a separate window. I can drag this onto a separate monitor, do what I like. I can close this media pool knowing that I can always get access to my media pool from this separate window. And now a real quick message from this video sponsor, Squarespace. I've actually just started rebuilding my own website once again and I'm doing so using Squarespace. One of the reasons is because they've got a bunch of really awesome templates which are an absolute doddle to customize and modify to get them looking exactly as you want them. Plus there's a bunch of built-in tools like analytics, SEO tools, marketing, online stores, 
blogs, and even recently they've added scheduling so you can schedule and arrange meetings directly from your website. And all of that means I can just keep everything in one place, which just makes my life a whole lot easier. If you fancy checking out Squarespace for yourself, simply shoot over to squarespace.com and you can start your free trial. When you're ready to launch, simply shoot to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Alex Tech to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, or simply use the code Mr. Alex Tech at checkout. Simple. Now here's a real quick setting which used to drive me mad. So I like to use this where I've only got the one preview window. If you need to change it, make sure your inspector is closed by clicking on inspector, top right hand corner, and then you've got this little icon here to activate or deactivate your dual viewer mode. I'll let's use single viewer, but when I hover over my icons within the media pool, I get the previews and I don't like that because I like to use a different option, which I'll show you in a second. So to disable that, turn on your dual viewer mode like so. On the left hand screen, this is your source preview. Click on the three little dots and then go to live media preview and just untick that. Now, if we just go back to our single viewer, when I hover my mouse, it won't actually give me the preview. Instead, I simply double click and then I can just treat this like its own preview. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I prefer that method. One, if you're on an older system, it will make things a little bit quicker because it won't try and load it into the preview every time you drag your mouse over the media pool. That can be quite annoying. And then there's another more specific reason. With that disabled, when I'm on the timeline, I can simply go to any footage within the media pool and drag it onto my preview, and then I get these options appearing on the right-hand side. I can insert, overwrite, replace, fit to fill, place on top, append to the end, or ripple overwrite. It's a really great way of adding things to your timeline just using a mouse, and it means you don't have to remember a billion different keyboard shortcuts. Of course, there are some keyboard shortcuts which are worth knowing, and this is one which I found only recently. Give your footage a click on the timeline, and then hold the control and shift keys on your keyboard, and now you can drag this around, and it won't overwrite anything. Instead, it will move things to fit. So you can swap positions of clips. So I can drag this over here, and as you can see, things are moving out of the way. And there's more. Keep holding Control and Shift, and then you can use the comma and full stop keys on your keyboard to actually swap clips around. So I can move this clip further to the left on the timeline, or keep pinging it over to the right just so I can reorder things really quickly and really easily. That's a great little shortcut. Now, what about that keyframe trick I teased in the intro? So I've got this clip here. I'm gonna add a keyframe on the zoom. We'll scrub forward a little bit and then zoom in. And now we've got this, zoom in. And it's completely linear. There's no acceleration to it. But what you can do, as you can see, I'm on this keyframe, so it's highlighted in red. There's a couple of arrows, so I can flick to the next one or flick back to this first one. If we right click on the red keyframe itself, we've got the option to ease out and that just adds a nice bit of acceleration to the beginning, which makes it look much nicer. We're gonna to go to the end keyframe, we're gonna right click, we now have the option to ease in, so we've got an ease out at the beginning and an ease in at the end, and now this is gonna look much nicer, not just be a really abrupt edit, it means you can make things look better without having to mess around jumping into the curves. Love that, super quick and easy. Now, if you ever noticed this before, it's on your edit page, but you've probably never really noticed it. It's right here, under your preview window, and what it is, is a jog wheel for your mouse. So if I give it a click, hold my mouse button down, I can scrub forwards, or I can scrub backwards on my timeline. It's not that useful really, but it is kind of handy if you like to use your mouse to just scrub through your timeline. I can keep scrubbing all the way back, or scrub forward and do whatever I want. Now if you've got one of these, a mouse with a middle scroll wheel, which you absolutely should have by the way if you're using DaVinci Resolve, makes life a whole lot easier, there's a few things you can do with this as well. For one, sticking with that jog wheel, if I put my mouse over it and then scroll my mouse, I can actually use my mouse wheel to just scrub forwards and backwards on my timeline. If I click my middle mouse on the timeline itself, I can just hold to move around my timeline really quickly and really easily like so. I'm actually a bit too zoomed into my timeline, so I'm gonna hold Alt and then scroll out and I can just zoom in and out of my timeline like so. But the best use for me, in your preview window, hold your middle mouse button and you can just drag your preview window around like so. If you scroll in while your cursor's over the preview window, you can zoom right in. So I can just click and zoom to move around so I can get a good look at things. Now this is particularly useful because it works on the color page and on the Fusion page. I can click my middle mouse, move it around. The only difference, if I want to zoom, I simply hold control this time and then scroll to zoom in and out. Ah, magnifying glasses. 
I always forget about these magnifying glasses, but if you go to the media pool, you've got the little magnifying glass at the top and that allows you to search for things in that media pool. So you can search for file names, like so. If you use this drop down, you've got a load of other options. So one that's quite useful is FPS. If I give that a click, most of the footage within here is 30, so I can just narrow it down. But there's also a little bit of 60 in there and I could just search for it like so. Now, another really useful instance of the magnifying glass is down here within your effects library. If you need to find anything real quick, I'm going to go to open effects, click my little magnifying glass. I'll type in DR for this example to grab my drop shadow. And there we go. Just make sure when you go to say video transitions or a different area, just click in your little X to clear that magnifying glass to get your full list back. Dim. No, not you. You're not dim. Dim. On the edit page, over to the right hand side, you've got this dim button. And all it means is if I'm playing and this audio is a little bit loud, I can just hit dim to knock it down 75% and now hit play and it's much, much quieter. All my audio levels are actually exactly the same, but it's a quick way just to reduce that volume so you can have a conversation with someone while you're trying to preview it back. Just don't forget to untick the dim button when you finish with it. I have been caught out a few times by wondering why my volume is so low, and that's because the dim was ticked. But really, that was just me being, well, dim. I'll tell you what's not dim though, Undo. Control and Z is probably one of my most used keyboard shortcuts, but there's actually slightly more to it than meets the eye. If you've made a bunch of changes you want to undo, rather than relentlessly smashing that Control and Z shortcut, simply go to Edit, and then History, and then you've got a list of all the different changes that you've made that can be undone. So my last one was Moving Clips. I've done all of these things before. If I want to go back to the original, I'm going to hit Original and it's going to set my timeline back to what it was before I made all those changes. You can also simply go to Edit, History, and Open History Window to have a little pop-up open at all times. So as you go through making changes, it's going to do a list of all the different things that you're doing, and you can just undo all of those things at any point.